who spoke to CNN just minutes before getting arrested. Protests across the country started after the military overthrew the elected government in February. And since then, one advocacy group says more than 500 people have been killed, including children. The military cut off Internet access and no international journalist has been allowed into the country until now. CNN's Clarissa Ward is live for us in Myanmar with the permission of the military. They're escorting the team on the ground. Clarissa, explain why it's so important that you're there. Well, Jake, I want to underscore that no independent international journalists have been allowed into this country uh, in the last two months since that bloody coup took place. As you said, rights groups saying more than 550 people killed. This is a massive protest movement that really came about after the military ousted Myanmar's democratically elected government, the people coming out to the, into the streets in the millions. And the more they protest, Protested, and the more animated those protests became, the more the military tried to suppress them. The military here really does not have the popular support of the people of Myanmar. So we felt it was essential, even though it is a difficult situation when you are in a country with the permission of the, uh, in this case, the military, the main oppressors in this situation, we felt it was very important to be on the ground, to see for ourselves whatever we could, and to tell the story of the people of Myanmar, Jay. And what's it been like to report there? Have you had the freedom to report whatever you want to report? So we've had the freedom to report what we want to report. As you can tell right now, we're going live to you from here in Myanmar. We are, though, very controlled in terms of how we can move around, who we can talk to. I'm here in a military compound. We wanted to stay in a hotel, and we were told simply that that was not possible. Every single place we go to, we go with a huge amount of security. We have minders following our every move. They're constantly filming on their iPhones every conversation we have. And those conversations, by the way, are really limited because we haven't had a huge amount of access to ordinary people from Myanmar. And I just want to give you a little bit of a sense, if I can get this clip up, of, of what it's like trying to report here. Take a look. What's this poster here? We see we okay. support CRPH okay. with the three finger salute. Okay, okay. That's from people who are against the military. Is that saying that the people in this area are against the military? Yeah. Um, maybe not sure, but because uh, uh, um, some demonstrators go around all uh, the young go and uh, uh, shouted uh, demonstration. Can we maybe uh, talk uh, to some of the people? Can we ask them? Not sure, because of this country is security. I, I, I'm not sure, because I just for interpretation. Your samples. Okay. I'm wondering, there's some people over there. Maybe we could go and talk to them. <laughs> oh, okay. So. The security forces told me uh, we shouldn't stay for a long time here uh, for, for our security. For our security yeah, yes. gives you a sense of the intense level of security with us. One, two, three, another three over there. Six trucks full of soldiers accompanying our every move. And I talked there about that three finger salute, the so-called Hunger Games salute. This gesture has become the symbol, really, of resistance against the military coup. And even when we were out on the streets with all that military, uh, military people around us, with all those minders around us, people would come up at any available opportunity and flash that salute at our camera. They want the world to know what they are going through and they want more people out there telling their story, Jake. Clarissa, why would the military let you in? Well, the military has its side of the story, too, and up until now, they've been largely tight-lipped about what that is. Essentially, what they want the world to know is that the protesters have become much more violent. The protesters are using Molotov cocktails. They're using slingshots, which, again, is no match for the assault rifles uh, that the Myanmar military is using. But really, they're trying to cast the protest movement as a violent mob of anarchists that needs to be suppressed. They took us to a number of factors 
cities that have been burned down. They said that the protesters were responsible. The protesters say they were not responsible. But that's very much the narrative that they're hoping will take shape. The idea that somehow uh, it's the protesters who are to blame for all the violence here. But when you're looking at the actual makeup of what's happening during these standoffs and these protests that are quickly turning into massacres, you can see that one side clearly has a huge uh, advantage in terms of its of its of its arms, of its level of, of you know weaponry and funding, and uh, there's simply no match, Jake. And Clarissa, you sat down with a senior member of the military leadership there in Myanmar. No other journalist has been able to do that. What, what did you ask him? Well, we had a lot of things to ask him, and it was a pretty uncomfortable interview, to be honest. So we wanted particularly to drill down on the number of innocent civilians who have been killed, more than 550 protesters, pro-democracy protesters, most of them unarmed, among them 44 children, Jake. That's according to the United Nations. So we really wanted to get some sense of how on earth the military uh, could justify this. We went to him specifically at one point with a very very specific piece of video that shows a young activist being killed in cold blood to give him a sense to explain how on earth such a brutal killing could possibly be justified. Take a look. This is CCTV footage of 17-year-old Kwame La going past a police convoy. You can see the police shoot him on the spot. His autopsy later said that he suffered brain injury as a result of a cycling accident, which I think we can all see that's not a cycling accident. How do you explain this? If that kind of thing occurred, we will have an investigation into it. We will investigate if the video is real or not. There may be some videos which look suspicious, but our forces do not have any intention to shoot innocent people. We will investigate if it's real or not. We also pushed him hard on what the game plan is here. How can this violence possibly end, this awful cycle of violence? And when will the people get to have their voices heard? He said that the military's plan has always been to allow for another round of elections sometime in either the next year or possibly up to two years. But it's really important to underscore here, Jake, that nobody here on the ground really believes that because the whole reason that this coup took place in the first place is that there were free and fair elections back in November. There were independent election monitors there who did not see any problems in terms of fraud or any significant problems. And that election was won in a landslide by the NLD party. The military's party suffered a humiliating defeat. And that's what precipitated this coup in the first place. So I think people are very unwilling to believe the idea that there will be another round of free and fair elections and that their candidate, their choice, who is right now under arrest in prison, Aung San Suu Kyi will be allowed to become president if she did indeed win again. Or, frankly, no one believes that she will be allowed to run again because she is facing these trumped up charges, Jake. And Clarissa, tell us about the people who talked to you and then were subsequently arrested. You know, Jake, this is always your worst nightmare as a journalist, right? We finally were able to negotiate access to a public space, not a controversial space. It was a space that the military actually picked. But the minute we got to this market and we're just shooting video of people going about their daily business, once they saw their cameras and they knew that CNN was in town and they had been writing a lot about it on social media, a lot of people came up to us. They flashed that three-finger Hunger Games salute I told you about. They talked about wanting justice. They talked about wanting democracy. They talked about wanting freedom. More than that, so many of them talked about how frightened they are, Jake. Soldiers coming into their neighborhoods every single night, dragging dead bodies away. And what we found out was that shortly after this trip to the market, uh, at least eight people, by CNN's count, were arrested oh. for the simple crime 
of just having spoken to us and said that they were afraid. We pushed the general really hard on that. He admitted that 11 people in total were arrested. He said that they shouldn't have been arrested to give him credit and that they would be released. And we can now confirm that they have indeed been released, uh, which is a huge relief for us. And also we are grateful to the military for releasing them. And we should note, I mean, when people talk to you, or they flash you the, the Hunger Games salute, the three-fingered Hunger Games salute that I'm holding up right now uh, in solidarity with them, I should say. Uh, they are, they, that's an act of civil disobedience at great risk. Um, what other acts or forms of civil disobedience have you, have you witnessed? Well, this is it, just it. The military is trying to control the country through brute force, but what they can't do is make people work, for example. So there's a huge civil disobedience movement. Um, most of the country's workers are striking. They're not going to work, whether it's ministries, whether it's banks. You go by the banks here. There's long, long lines outside of every single bank. That means that the economy is grinding to a halt. There's garbage in the streets. It's very difficult for the military to kind of keep up with this charade that this is a functioning society now. As long as people refuse to work, as long as you don't have the support of your own populace, and let's be very clear here, we have seen absolutely no evidence that the military has any real popular support here in Myanmar. And as long as that continues, even if you are shooting at unarmed protesters, even if you are killing children, it becomes very difficult and challenging to actually run a country, Jake. Yeah. Larissa Ward in Myanmar for us. Thank you so much. Really appreciate your courage. Thank you.